Stampers, I'm Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel and another It's Masculine Monday card. Today I wanted to show you this technique that I saw out on the internet. I was looking at the um, Live Love Cards website and Darlene DeVries and she had used this technique using um, the Distress Inks by Tim Holtz and I just knew that I would be able to do the same thing using Stampin' Up! products because as you know I love my Stampin' Up! products. So to do this card we are going to need the new Wonderland stamp set and you will find this in the new holiday catalog and we'll be using the tree and then I used the sentiment from the Every Blessing stamp set that's in our the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. I'm going to be using our new archival black ink. Fabulous, fabulous stamp pad. Really, really like it. It stamps so nice and crisp and black and you'll just be thrilled with it also. Then I'm going to be using the Mossy Meadow ink and the Pear Pizzazz ink. Then I'll be using a piece of um, Mossy Meadow cardstock, two strips of our Dazzling Diamond Glimmer Paper, and a piece of watercolor cardstock. Now, as you'll notice on my cardstock here, I've made some lines and grids because I'm going to be stamping the first tree high up and then I'm going to stamping the next trees lower down. And just because I wanted everything really centered and even, I went ahead and drew some few grid marks on my card and then I'll erase them after all the water coloring and everything is done. So if you're interested, uh, this particular piece of paper is of uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. This first line that you're going to see right here this line is up from the bottom of the card three quarters of an inch. The next line is up from the bottom an inch and a quarter. The line here and here, they're just centered. Um, There's just a mark made in the center of my card. And both of these that I will be using for lining up are one inch from each side. And after I complete all my stamping, then I'm going to go ahead and I'll trim the card down to the size that I actually want it. But I decided to stamp on the full size sheet um, to get started. And so let's get on with this. So like I said, we're going to be using the Pear Pizzazz. We're going to be using the Mossy Meadow. And I need to get my stamp cleaner. Just be right with you. because I'm going to be changing ink as we go along so I'll need to be able to use my um, stamp cleaner and this is my Stampin' Up! cleaner and what's really nice about this is that you apply your cleaner to one side and then the other side stays dry so it allows you to clean off your um, stamps when you're working and keep them really nice and easy to use so we're going to be doing that and so let me go ahead and we'll grab my first color. The first one that I'm going to be doing is in the Mossy Meadow. And because it's a larger stamp, I just decided to go ahead and ink it upside down as opposed to the other way around. This way I can just make certain that I've got a really nice quantity of ink on my stamp. You're also going to see that I have some marks on the back of my stamp. What I did is I found the center line and made a mark and I made a mark out to each side of the line that's on the bottom of the stamp and I found the center line to the, excuse me to the center of the trees and this will allow me to also um, make sure that the stamp is um, up and down vertical and exactly where I want it. So let's go ahead and we're just going to line everything up with the marks that I have on my cardstock. We'll go ahead and get a really good image. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be stamping lower and I don't want the ink to get down to the bottom areas, I'm going to use micropore tape and I'm just going to run an area of this across right at my pencil line and we're going to mask off the bottom of the card. What's really nice about the micropore tape is it is waterproof and so when I'm going to be doing my watercoloring on this it's going to help me keep everything looking um, or all lined up and looking crisp and clean. Okay, so now that we have that down I'm going to take my stamp and clean it off. Okay, then we'll go ahead and we'll ink it up with the pear pizzazz. And again, I want to make certain that I've got really good quantity of ink on on my pad and or on my stamp. And sometimes um, I'm just not sure, so I just again turned it over. So now what I'm going to do is going to take the image and I'm going to stamp on either side of the tree. So just like the first time, I'm going to line everything up with my grid marks that I have on my paper, apply some good pressure, and then we'll do this again. Okay, so we'll do our final stamping, and just like we did on the other one, we're just going to line up the lines, and then we'll go ahead and apply our stamp. And I'm giving it some pretty good pressure to make sure that everything gets transferred the way I want it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top area across the top of the card, and I'm going to use another piece of the micropore tape and I'm just going to run a strip right across the top. And this will then mask off the area that I'm going to be applying the water to. Okay, so now we're going to be using a aqua painter, and which is just a container. It holds water, has a brush on the end, so it's a way of um, applying water and being able to have a consistent amount. And then I'm just going to start in the middle and work my way over, blending the colors on the trees. And you'll see that the water will react to the stamp or to the ink that we've applied and we'll just be able to get a really nice gradation of color across the card. So then you'll just repeat everything on the other side. And every time you do this, it's going to come out just a little bit different. So if you're thinking that the ink is just not spreading well, just squeeze your brush again and make sure there's adequate water on your brush so that everything will blend. Just like that. So now we're just going to pick it up. <laughs> it says here, I'm going to pick it up. Okay, we're just going to pick it up, and then I'm just going to make sure that I've got good color that's blend um, all the way across to the edges. Just like that, okay? And like I said, every single time you do this, it's going to come out just a little tiny bit different, but I think it just looks really nice, and it's a great variation on a way to watercolor. So then what we're going to do is we will just take off the micropore tape 
and you can see how that gives us a nice crisp edge and we're going to take the same off of the bottom okay now um, you can let this air dry or I'm going to go ahead and dry, grab my heat tool And all we want to do is to just let this dry. And you'll want to apply your heat across the cardstock. And if you're finding that it is starting to warp a little bit, you can turn it over and dry the back of the cardstock. And that will generally flatten out any warping that's happening. So just like that, we're all dry. Didn't take too long. Okay, so now here's our card. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase my pencil lines. And then you won't know that I was the kind of person that just had to have lines on everything so that I could make sure that it was all centered. You could easily stamp this and not do the grid marks. Like I say, I'm just kind of funny that way. I really like things really lined up and looking uniform and the pencil marks are just a way for me to do that. But fortunately, they all erase really well and you'll never know that you had run that across there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cutter and I'm going to trim down the sides of the card. So we started at the four and a quarter. And I'm just going to trim an off of eight, three eighths of an inch off of each side. It's those pesky eight inch things. But I just love Molly, my cat. You see Molly? Okay, you have to get down, dear. She just has to be involved in everything. We know how that is, right? Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Okay, so we got our our, our archival black ink and um, I have my sentiment make sure that's nicely inked and we'll just get this centered on our card there we go. Now, not too much left. I thought I wanted a little bit of trim around here, so I decided to use some embossing or um, black baker's twine. So I'm going to take my snail adhesive and I'm just going to put a little bit down each side of the card. And then I'm going to take my baker's twine and I'm just going to wind it around okay and wind it around the back and trim it off And then for just a little added interest, I decided to go ahead and add a button. So I've taken one of our Stampin' Up! Black buttons and I've run the Baker's Twine through it. And then all I'm going to do is kind of cinch this up on this one side and leave it a little spread out on the other. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to use a glue dot to glue this down. 
And they're always easier to take off with a pokey tool. At least I have an easier, much easier time with it. So you can go ahead and you can apply the glue dot directly to the card or you can apply it to the back of the button and then just place the button where you want it on your card. I think I'll just put it right there. Just like that. Just adds a little bit of interest to it. Now we're going to take our cardstock and we're just going to go ahead and fold this in half. As I said, this was uh, um, 11 by 4 and a quarter and it's scored at 5 and a half to make a standard size card. And I have my two strips of my Dazzling Diamonds glimmer paper and I'm going to use the Tombow ink or the Tombow glue. And we'll just apply this to the sides of the cardstock. And we'll do the same with the other. This Tombow adhesive, I really like it. I really just find that my cards glue, glue down so well using it. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll just put it on with that little border on the side so that the mossy meadow is showing out the side. You can see here, I don't know if you can, let me come in a little tighter here. You see where I have a little tiny bit of glue that's come out right here? One of the things that I can do is I just take my pokey tool and I just run it down the side and that will take that little tiny bit of glue that had um, seeped out underneath and it will move it right back underneath the strip and that way you won't see that you've had a, mis a mishap with the glue. So now I'm just going to apply my glue all across the back. You want to make certain that you get um, the corners well because of the fact that the watercolor paper is pretty sturdy and so you just want to make sure that you get good glue coverage. So we'll just go ahead and apply this to our card. Just like that. Now the final touches of what I did to complete the card is I put a little bit of dazzling diamond glitter on the trees in the background and then I just sprinkled a lot of sequins of the tiny sweet sequins on the tree in the front to just give them some additional depth and sparkle. So here's our card. I'm glad that you turned in today and I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please subscribe and click on the thumbs up button. I'd love to have you subscribe to my videos. You can also find information about all of the products that I used for today's card out on my blog and you'll see a link right here at KathleenStamps.com and if you want to purchase any of the items all you have to do is click on the individual products where they're listed or go out and you click on my shopping cart. Thank you so much for stopping by.